Welcome back everybody, Kevin here. And in this video, we're going to set up our UI for this database table of flights and use our model that we created for it to kind of display those in a nice uh, table-based interface. Now, the first thing that we have to do, like we did with post types, is we have to register a resource uh, set of pages for our custom table. And so um, what we'll do here is we'll call this flight. And then we can call it flights for the plural. And this should do it for us. And what this is going to do is like the registering the post type, this is type rockets way of registering uh, a custom interface for custom tables. And that's all that all that this is really going to do for us is going to register some pages in the WordPress admin. And I'll talk about why that's necessary here as we switch to the browser. Okay, this has been corrected. We now have flights. And, and the reason that we registered this page like we did with the custom post types is because WordPress doesn't give us these nice routes that we're used to. Let's say uh, we'd have a URL like slash admin flights, for example. Okay, WordPress doesn't really give us this path-driven routing. It gives us more of uh, this type of routing where it, access as a PHP file, and then we can pass query parameters to it. So that's what we're doing. We have uh, essentially created these custom routes per se using query parameters, then the more eloquent and nice looking routes that you're used to maybe with a custom MVC framework like Ruby on Rails or Laravel. And so this only applies really to the WordPress admin. And uh, that's what TypeRocket is expecting us to do. It's expecting us to use the WordPress admin interface in order to build out our views. And it's going to use those views along with these routes uh, to connect into our controllers. I know that's a mouthful, but we're gonna get into it here. So uh, the main thing that we need to know is that this route is going to connect us to a controller we created very early on, the flights controller, and it's going to send it to the index method on the flights controller. And then when we have access to that index, we can then send over a view, which in our view case is the HTML code and user interface that we want to appear on the page. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that we have our flights resource registered, we're going to jump over to our app controllers and get that flight controller that we had earlier. And here we'll see we have a lot of methods already created for us. And each one of them is important in its own way, and we'll walk through what each one of them is for as we move through this tutorial. However, the index section is the method that we care about because that's the method that's going to get called from this controller whenever somebody goes to that flights page, uh, flights underscore index, okay? So let's return a type rocket view, and we want to say this is going to be part of a flights folder and it's going to be an index.php file. Now, we don't write our view like this in TypeRocket uh, because we want to save a few characters. So instead of typing this, we will type dot flights.index, which, which is equivalent to what we just saw uh, just a second ago with slash index.php, okay? So it's just a little bit nicer way of looking at this. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull in a template file from our resources, views, and this will be the root of where all views live. So view, and then we will need to create a folder called flights. And then inside of here, we will create a file called index. And in this index file, we will just say hi. And let's go back to the browser. Refresh this page, and here we go. Hi, and it's a flights page. And you'll notice that on the admin, if you're accustomed to Laravel layouts, essentially views for admin pages already come with the WordPress main layout with the navigation and such. So there is no quote unquote layout that we need to use to get this output. Um, so with all of this in mind, we can now begin to build out our custom table that we were talking about to list the data that's in our database already. So let's jump back to the code and let's grab a database or a table 
uh, UI component. So table, TR table, and then type rocket smart enough as long as all the names match to pull in the model for this particular table, um, which would be the uh, flight model. However, if, if you have uh, trouble with this because of your particular um, database naming, then you might have to put in the model as such. Again, if we're using uh, the standard naming convention, then we don't have to pass this through, but uh, that's kind of a good note to have here. So we'll have our table, and then we're going to want to fill it out with information. Uh, we want columns and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna jump over to our tutorial, and we can copy and paste the code that's there so we don't have to write it all by hand. So over here, we'll scroll down into this admin section, and we'll grab here our table rendering. We'll grab this and jump back to the code and then we'll just paste all of that in here. So we have this table. This table has some columns. It has a customer dot display name and if we're already accustomed to how uh, models in uh, type rocket work then we know that dot simply means give me the customer and then reach into that customer and grab a value out of that particular model. So we were able to get not just the customer, but the information about the customer into this page. And then we got the seat and we got the post title from that seat. And then our primary column will be customer.display, which is this here. And this is important because let's say you go to a mobile view or something like that, then WordPress kind of needs to know what your primary column is. And then our quick actions, for example, when we hover over like in post type, we need to see the edit view and delete sections. So that's what these actions are here. And then we're going to render that table and it will give us a nice looking table without too much work. So we're going to save this, jump back to the browser. And in the browser, we're going to refresh this page and we'll say, hey, we have the edit view delete section, those actions, we have the seat title and the ID. And if we want to pull in more information, we can. We can say, let's grab the customer email. So back here, we'll just copy this, paste it in, I think it's user email. I could be wrong. We'll just do email here. And we don't need quick action twice, so we'll save that. Jump back to the browser. Refresh. Yeah, and there we go. Now we have the uh, customer's email. Yeah, so that's our table view for this particular admin page. Now in the next few videos, we'll look at building out, uh, adding and editing our flights. And then uh, after that, we'll look at protecting things by, uh, in terms of policies to kind of lock down this system. So people that we don't want editing things, let's say subscribers or editors, cannot edit, delete, and update any records in this flight system that we want if they don't have capabilities for it.